Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal branding and business development company. I want to take you on a journey that takes another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal story, business conversations, and tips to improve your personal brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand podcast series, you will be able to differentiate yourself from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build trust, and reflect who you are. Developing your five-star personal brand is a great way to demonstrate your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or my guests, please email me at grant.magaw, spelled M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at 5 star BDM, B for brand, D for development, M for masters.com. Now let's begin with our next five star episode on Follow the Brand. Do you have the drive and confidence in yourself to be a leader in your field? Bernadette Vincent started with her strategic plan early in her career with a goal oriented, innovative, and creative mission. Her style of leadership is promotive and keeps everyone's best interest at heart when advocating for her team's success. Bernadette Vincent believes we are all capable of doing more. Decide what your development milestones for your journey are and advance your professional growth toward your dreams. As President and Chief Operating Officer, Bernadette leads dialysis and health services operations at Satellite Healthcare including delivery of care and treatment within the chronic clinic home and acute care settings. She also oversees several administrative functions and serves on four satellite healthcare board of director committees. Bernadette also oversees other satellite healthcare strategic businesses and ancillary services, including vascular access centers, ambulatory surgery centers, and medical nutrition therapy. A registered nurse and former dialysis nurse, Bernadette has many years of clinical experience and an outstanding track record of business success. She has served as senior level healthcare executive working with a who's who of organizations, including dialysis companies, hospitals, integrated delivery systems, physician services, national and regional health plans, several ambulatory care lines of business, health services, and home health agencies. Bernadette holds an MBA from the George L. Graziato School of Business at Pepperdine University and a BS in nursing from Dillard University in New Orleans. She was also a founding member of the Laureate Academy Charter School's Board of Directors, serving on the Finance Committee and as the Chairman of the Development Committee. Bernadette is a member of the Board of Directors of the National Kidney Foundation for the San Francisco Bay Area and the Pacific Northwest as a member of the Adaptive Business Leaders, a professional innovation organization for executives. Other key memberships include a long-standing member of the American College of Healthcare Executives, National Association of Health Services Executives, and National Healthcare Association, formerly known as National Renal Administrative Association. Let's welcome Bernadette Benson to the Follow the Brand podcast, where we are building a five-star brand that you can follow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode on Follow the Brand. You already know that I have a special guest. So I'm not going to belabor the fact that I have this beautiful person from all the way from San Jose, California, to give us her insight. Now, she's been a chief operations officer. She's been in healthcare administration for a number of years. And I wanted to bring her onto the show to impart some wisdom, to impart some insight on a lot of my audience who are healthcare executives, those that are in information technology, as well as entrepreneurs that they want to take a key takeaway from some of the things that you're leveraging 
that you've done over the uh, number of years that have gotten you to a point of excellence. That, that's how I, I'll frame that point of excellence. So without further ado, let's hear from Miss Bernadette Vincent and get a little bit of her story. Well, thank you, Grant. It's nice to be here today and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, of course, I have to make the neat disclaimer that uh, the views that I express today are, are my own and not those of satellite healthcare. Um, I am very thrilled to be here and talk about my journey and see what you can help me tell the viewers. Well, I already know what I want to start out with. And we talked a little bit before we got on today. I mean, she's from the NOLA area. That's Louisiana, right? We had Andre Boyd on. He talked a little bit about the flavor, what's going on in New Orleans. She's telling me she is from Southwest Louisiana, which more has a more Texas feel to a lot of things. Is that, is that where you got your start? Yes, it is. And I, I will say, though, the blend of Southeast Louisiana with uh, the West is sort of where it started, because you always got to go to the HBCU that you went to, and that's Dillard University. Give a shout out. Yes. Um, where I actually got my undergrad degree, uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Um, I practiced nursing pri primarily in the Southwest for uh, a bit and uh, from Lake Charles, Louisiana through to Houston, Texas, and then eventually came to, to Southern California after marrying my husband. Now, listen to that. So you got so there's always different tracks I found that people take to get to you know, the level that they're at. In your particular case, you're in the C-suite. You're a chief operations officer for a very large organization. And, you know, people start out in certain ways. You're, from what I just heard, you started out in nursing, yes. right? And yeah. then you begin that, that trek forward. So my question is, what are the things that you're leveraging, your characteristics, your personal background that you felt helped you be successful as a healthcare executive? Wow, that's a good loaded question. Let me unpack it a little bit. I can tell you um, it's it was probably since I was a child that I knew I would be in healthcare. Um, I am from a family of eight. Uh, I have uh, out of eight of us, six of us are in healthcare. So uh, my brother's a trauma surgeon. My sister is uh, just now retired from being a dean of nursing. And uh, I have another sister who is in nutrition health and one in hearing and disabilities and one in vision disabilities. Um, I, I'm excited because that was in red, but also my great, great grandmother was a midwife and she was able uh, even then to go to black and white communities it was only allowed that because there weren't enough physicians. I didn't know that as a child, but now I understand it. Having said that, I always thought I would stay in the uh, sort of healthcare delivery side of care. So that's been where I kind of did most of my work, although I did work on the payer side of, uh, of healthcare as well. Um, but I had a lot, I would say, that propelled me to do so, and that is you, you have to listen and lean in and not think that it's beyond your age. You have to say to yourself, I can do this. You have to have role models. You have to have uh, resilience. Um, you have to also not take everything personal. Um, your journey has to be your own strategic plan, your personal strategic plan. You have to know what you want. And um, I'm a person who believes in writing goals and try to you know, quarterly look at those goals to see if I'm achieving them. And I've been doing that now for about 20 years. And generally speaking, I achieve about 70% of my goals. Uh, that's impressive. That's very, very impressive, uh, very insightful. And I'm starting to get a feel for the next question that I'm gonna <laughs> ask. And you know, this is a personal brand show. And I always like to ask people because, and, I, and when, when you, when you answer this, think outside of just yourself about your brand. Mm -hmm. Think about others. How do you think your brand is resonating you know, with your peers, with um, the people that you lead? 
if they had to say, this is Bernadette Benson's brand, this is why I follow her, what do you think they would say? Well, I have been told that I am very supportive. I have a promotive style leadership. Um, I get involved without being uh, too intense. And so I'm pretty calm in most situations. Um, we've just been through a tremendous crisis, as you know, with this uh, uh, you know, COVID uh, pandemic, which has just been enormous for the past two years. They would say that I do have everyone's best interest at heart, um, not so self-sacrificing that I don't realize that I also must be at the helm to help through difficult times. Um, I'm an innovative person so that I never think that I have come to a journey and it's an end point. I always think there's more to it. So they know I'm driven but I'm also very inclusive. Um, and I think tolerant to some degree uh, as it pertains to really understanding the dynamics of any situation. You know, this world is in an incredible place than it was when I first started my career. And so there weren't many people like me in healthcare and leadership uh, to look up to. Um, but I will also say this, my parents who had less than a fourth grade education always believed that you can be anything you want to be and that education was the way and the rest would be uh, founded on faith, family and friends. And that has been pretty much what I've used all my life to advance myself. Uh, no matter what, you can always rely on those three things. And that is Great. Uh, I know I relied on a little bit of your brand when you were here in South Florida. You're at one of the events. And um, I said, you know, Bernadette, what, is it possible you can introduce me to the uh, CIO chief information officer at an organization? Mm -hmm. And you said, without question, I, I'll make that introduction for you and teed it up. And it really was, uh, uh, it was great. Cause a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, you know, I think I could do it, do it internet. But when people actually do it and they do it at a certain level, meaning you have respect, that person respected you enough to like, Hey, if you're going to bring something, someone within my orbit, I already know that this person is worth my time. And I think, thank Absolutely. you again for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, that's your brilliant. brand is also very, uh, impressive. Uh, grant so it was easy to do it <laughs> i'll take that I, I, i'll put that down on, on, on my list so now we're talking about beliefs because here here's my question i see that you went to an hbcu i see you got your education i see that you had healthcare in your background people that were influential but how did you get into leadership because there's you have to have a certain skill set to, yeah. to lead people, you moving away from the bedside, you know, tell us about how did you believe, get that belief in yourself to, to be able to start that, 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 that journey toward the sweet, sweet. You know, I've been blessed with some very strong mentors and uh, people who uh, knew enough uh, to say uh, there is an opportunity to look at, um, minorities in leadership and also to look at females in leadership. Now, those are can be two different things to different people. Um, but I'll say this, they were just interested in me as a person and they saw in me something that needed to be developed. And so they made it their business to do that. Now, I think I opened myself up to, um, you know, you, we all need this, someone who will give you the truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly about yourself. And you take that, and as I stated about my personal strategic plan, it wasn't easy, but I knew that there was more uh, behind the scenes in healthcare. So I was one of the first African-Americans to graduate from a MBA program at Pepperdine University. So when I got my MBA, it was clear to me that I had other opportunities now that I could sit with other executives in another setting and do the innovative work that I like to do. You're right to say, I, I love being able to be creative in my job. So I typically took opportunities that allowed me to be creative. With that said, 
every one of those opportunities um, permitted me to have more exposure to someone else who decided I needed to be on their team. And as I executed well, based not only on my own thoughts about what success looked like, but sort of in the eyes of the uh, beholder, I was able to advance the ball. Seeing that happen from the sidelines, many felt like I got to have her on my team. Then the next thing you know, I got to have her leading my team. And then the next, it kept going. Um, and I pride myself in working with men and women executives who paved the way for me. But my very first mentor was Kathleen Stilwell. And I say this because she is one of the women who helped me to understand how to carry myself, um, how to mentor others. And I always thought no matter how far I got in life, I would pay it forward. So everything I've done, no matter what level I was, I always tried to do that. So another woman reached out to you mm -hmm. and, and, and helped you, you know, be an advocate. You know, there's a difference yeah. between being a, uh, you know, a mentor, yeah, sure. I mean, a sponsor, but somebody is, that is actually advocating on your behalf to, yeah. to, for you to move forward is it, huge, right? It is. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Grant, I was about to take a healthcare job. So this is how important it is to know when you have to have discernment in a situation. And I was getting ready to take a job in Southern California that was going to make me be more in nephrology nursing. I was sitting in human resources, in comes Kathleen Stilwell, and she begins to talk to me as I wait for the VP of human resources. Once I, she saw me and engaged me, she says, I need you on my team. I know what you came here for, but I can increase your salary and give you an opportunity. You are what I need on my team. And it was in that area of hospital administration that I started that journey. After that, I became the person who actually hired me when she left. And then from there, got recruited to an integrated care delivery system and became that leader's um, you know, person who hired me there. And then the next thing you know, I am pursued by other uh, sort of the payer side of the business and became a leader of people in, in the uh, payer side, uh, managed care, uh, insurance, uh, health plans, all those kinds of businesses. And it continued. Then I was pursued by someone who I actually had to um, to, to ding him a little bit because I had oversight over his uh, hospitals. And when he started his own company, then he hired me as a senior uh, a consultant. So those are the things that I talk about when I say networking is very important. And it's important not to fear talking to someone you normally wouldn't possibly go up to and striking a conversation. And I don't think that came from something that I developed on my own. I think it is something that is in you intrinsically. You must have the drive to say, I can do this. And so that's what we're talking about today. This episode is brought to you by Five Star BDM. Five Star BDM is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for small to mid-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our five-star business and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. The result is more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Please visit www.5starbdm.com to learn more and view all the episodes of Follow the Brand. That is so true. Confidence. The confidence in yourself. And I, you have to have certain experiences that occur in your life to reinforce, validate the confidence that you need to succeed. To succeed. 
Because you may not know what you're asking for, right? You say, oh, yes, I do want to have this particular role. This is a person that has that role. Let me follow in their footsteps without really knowing uh, what you're asking for. So here's my question, because think about the the healthcare executives that are out there in the field today. Maybe they are Mm -hmm. mid-level, maybe they're early careers. And I know a lot of them are, are taking that operational track. Sure. If they were talking to you right now, what advice would you want to give them that you feel that you and you see this kind of you got a lot of pan, you know, passion, energy, things, all these things have become a part of your brand. What do you think is that missing gap in a lot that you see people are coming into the field? And how would you reinforce that? Yeah, I if I were talking to my younger self and these these uh, the folks you're talking about. Uh, where I actually um, sort of never set my sights to say, I'm going to be a president chief operating officer of a company one day. I basically just took the steps I I was in and said, I think I'm capable of doing more. Um, But I think it's important to know that if you're talking to your younger self, you say to yourself, what do I need? And I needed feedback. I needed to understand how to do it. And I also, to your point, needed to understand, you know, is this what I really want? Um, It is so important that we don't just go for a title and go for a a job because it brings one part of it. And sometimes cash is king, you know, it's gonna be a a big decision maker for many. I never let that be the top reason I took an opportunity. I always sought um, self-fulfillment. I wanted to be able to, be my best me. So I would say to them, know what you want, decide what you believe about what you want, not someone else's dream, not someone else's thoughts about what you should do, but definitely seek feedback, seek wisdom, because you don't have it all. Even if you have done great things, you will always know that there's room for more learning. And you can always feel that that's part of you for the rest of your journey. I learn something new every day. And I appreciate that uh, very much. Talk to the front line as well as talk to the Oval Office. You will find that people will um, impart their knowledge because you sought them. Listen, be firm in your beliefs once you do that and then pursue opportunities. You might get rejected as many times as you can. Uh, Don't give up just continue on the journey if you want it if you know what you want that's when you can pursue it and just do your personal best doing so there'll be someone there to help you i believe that i love that uh as you stated that because that's the attraction law of attraction Mm -hmm. right and if you're putting out that type of effort and energy there are others that are noticing it, even though they might not directly engage with you at that time that you're thinking about it. Uh, yeah. But they are taking note uh, because you're looking to grow, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And you just need some nurturing uh, to, to bring that out. Uh, now I'm going to ask you, have you done the same thing in your role? Look over someone's shoulders, kind of taking them under your wing and advocate it for them. Has that been a part of your brand as well? Yeah, Grant, um, I think I'm a chronic uh, uh, promotive style leader. Um, I I believe that you got to pay it forward, right? And uh, there are people who come to me and then there are people that I've just reached out to. Um, I think there's the one story that I will tell you of a person who came to me and said, I keep getting passed over. I know I'm qualified. I got this. I got that. I've been at it a long time. I know I can deliver. What is it? And so we worked together for a few mentoring sessions. And what I learned is that the timidity was coming out more than the passion. There's a difference between the two. And oftentimes we get mistaken, uh, especially uh, people of color because of our passion. And we talk maybe uh, louder and more forcefully about it, but we really are just demonstrating passion. Others hear that as t- timidity. Being mindful of that makes a difference. Um, I worked with her on her own strategic plan 
Uh, I never call them resumes, by the way. And what I talk to her about is um, sort of knowing where you are and who you are. And in essence, I have them take a dot and draw it on a piece of paper. And then I ask them to put a dot further away from the first dot. And that's the destination dot. That's where I want to be next. Then I ask them, what is the gap between the two? Let's define that gap. Is it my education? Do I have, am I humble enough? Um, am I networked enough? Do I know how to articulate my needs? Um, am I long-winded when I articulate my needs? Am I terse with people? Do I get fired up too angry, you know, too fast? What, what sets me off? Where are my push buttons? I do all that gap analysis and then we work on that. The few people that I've done that have gone on to become either regional vice presidents or vice presidents or on and on and so forth. Um, I'm extremely excited. One of them became a CEO recently. Um, there are a number of people who just don't know how to uh, advance toward their dreams. And I think it's up to us um, to open those doors for them. You kind of mentioned some things on the, uh, I was going to talk about is like, how do you continue to stay on top of things, you know, in your role, that skills gap analysis. I do that a lot in, in my mm -hmm. business, right? Sure. And when I help individuals understand, like, here's your, your current state, this is where you want to get to. Exactly. Well, what I do that is not in words. What I would do is take someone like yourself and I would say, this is Bernadette's profile, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this compared to your profile, not to say it has to be exact, but understand the trajectories, the things that are in your history that aren't in yours mm -hmm. and not just yourself. I might do this for four or five different people that different tracks, like you had a nursing sure. track. Somebody might have an HR track. Somebody might be, you know, different, yeah. different ways of coming out of industry and then take a look at those things so you can see options. And then you begin to take ownership right, of what you need to do to invest in yourself because you have to invest in yourself, get the right courses. Don't, like you were saying earlier, oh, I've got this degree, I've done this. He's like, yeah, but do you have the relevant skill set right now that's applicable to what that you want to, to achieve? Would you agree with that? I would totally agree with that. Um, to, and I said this to you earlier, you know, too much is given, much is required. So when you think you have done all these things, you are probably still not sure of where your next developmental milestone is. And many of us don't think that uh, there's much more to be done. After all, I've accomplished all these other things. Uh, there is still room for uh, growth and personal and professional growth are things you should always cleave to as long as you are continuing on your journey. I totally agree. I totally agree. This has been a great conversation. I really enjoy it. And at this point in the show, I, I, it's part of my, my brand that I, that, that I do is that I call it we, we Unplug. I mean, I want you to give you the complete stage. Think about all the things that we've talked about mm -hmm. and some things that we just said. What have we not talked about? We don't want to leave anything you know, off the table. We want to put it on the table. And I want you to be able to just talk directly to the audience and, and, and say what you would like to say that will leave them inspired uh, to, to continue their journey and, yeah. and, and to seek those things that are needed uh, uh, to be successful. Thank you so much, Grant. And thank you for the opportunity to talk to your audience. Um, I'm, you know, I guess I think of myself as a simple person in, in the sense that I don't take myself too seriously. Um, I believe that... Um, the importance of things that matter to you or what you put your attention uh, to. So in other words, um, if you are focused on just building your career, you may leave something out uh, because you don't think about those who are on the side of you trying to do the same. I believe that, that, that uh, we should widen our lens very much so to include others anytime we get the opportunity because those things will always um, be in your rearview mirror as you're being able to give back even when you have gone forward. And so that's important.
um, one of the persons talked to me the other day just to hear my story a little bit about how I started. Um, when I was a kid, my first job was to take care of three um, kids. They were um, basically their mother worked during the night and basically slept during the day and needed someone to care for them. I was in high school. I needed to be able to get a job uh, to get ready for graduation. Um, when I did this, those kids were very passionate about how I took care of them, but they were absolutely the baddest kids I ever saw in my life. And it was the funniest thing because those things wouldn't be tolerated. Like people don't talk back to adults, you know, the thing. Um, here's the story. One of them said, I wish that you weren't black. I'm so sorry for you. That must be so hard. And they were young. And this was so amazing to me in the South to hear them say that because they had tears that we would suffer because of that. And that was something that stuck with me. I never felt sorry for myself. I never used my race to advance somewhere and I never used it to be an excuse. So what I learned seven years later when I took care of their mother in the hospital as the charge nurse and saw those grown kids was, you have to have that North Star in front of you at all times. That North Star will guide you to where you're trying to be. And yes, it's not easy. It's not, you know, wiggle your nose and get where you need to go and have a few conversations, get your degree. Sometimes the degree is not going to get you where you want to be, but that strong desire in you to want to be there is going to get you there. Never, never, never give up. My goodness, man, wonderful story. I really appreciated this entire conversation with you. And, and it's got me thinking on a lot of different levels. And I hope it's got our audience thinking on a lot of different levels because you have to step back and really take a look at yourself and where you want to go in order to get to where you need to be, right? Yes. And I think you've done a wonderful job. And again, thank you very much for taking the time to join us on the Follow the Brand. If the audience would like to get in touch with you, what which is the best way? Is it LinkedIn? Is it email or, or what? Yeah, you could do LinkedIn uh, and my uh, email address. I uh, carefully just send it on to you, but it's Vincent B. Nash at gmail.com. Excellent. So Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, th this has been wonderful. I tell everyone you can tune into all the episodes on Follow the Brand. And the reason why these episodes are done to teach you, to give you an opportunity to learn from others, to take key things away and put into your own strategic plan, as you just so eloquently stated. So that is one of the purposes that we do these shows. Thanks everyone for tuning in. You can tune into all the episodes of Follow the Brand at www.5starbdm. That's B for brand, B for development, and for masters.com. Thanks a lot, Bernadette. You take care. My pleasure, Grant. Take good care. Bye-bye. Right.